You know, it's called vertical drop. You guys remember this from 2015. This is the quintessential tenet of your spinning ball religion. You got to have drop every point from a tangent from your feet drops that is vertically drops away from you at eight inches per mile squared do you guys forget about this i mean come on you see this tangent line you see this drop right i can't believe you forgot about this and the next one the meaning of level and flat well let me break it to you level equals flat they're mutually inclusive from Merriam-Webster, level to make a line or surface horizontal, make flat or level. Level synonyms, even, flat, flush, plain. Level, flat, plain, even, smooth means having a surface without bends, curves, or irregularities. From dictionary.com, level, having no part higher than another, having a flat or even surface. Level, being in a plane parallel to the plane of the horizon. Horizontal. Level, to make a surface level. Even or flat. From Cambridge. Level, not rising or falling or higher on one side, but even in all directions. Horizontal or flat. Something that is level with something else is at the same height. Level, to make a surface flat. I mean, why do I even have to provide citation for this? I just don't understand. How do you not believe in any conspiracy theories? I understand not all of them, not most of them, but you don't believe in any conspiracy theory? <laughs> you just think the government's just batting a thousand and telling us the whole truth? <laughs> That's a strong stance to take. <laughs> And again, as I said before, I don't like talking about politics on stage or off stage. I don't like talking about things I don't feel like I'm truly knowledgeable in. But I do know this. Our government is placed in charge of all of its people. I'm a father who's been placed in charge of just one son. And I lie to that nigga the time. <laughs> Now, dark matter is not even what we should be calling it. Because that implies that it's matter. It implies we know something about it that we actually don't. So, a more precise labeling for it would be dark gravity. Now, if I call it dark gravity, are you going to say, does dark gravity really exist? I'd say, yeah, because 85% of the gravity has no known origin. There it is. What is gravity? Yeah, no idea. Okay, next question. <laughs> wow. So, here's the difference. <laughs> wow. So, I know. That's exactly what I wished for. Well, I actually wished for it 30,000 years ago. It's true. Even at the speed of light, mean spirited thoughts from the stars can take thousands or even millions of years to reach the Earth. Bitch, matter tells space how to curve. Space tells yeah. matter. <laughs> matter tells space how to curve. Space tells matter how to move. It's beautiful. That, that is beautiful. It, 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 it. it sounds like the opening to a dance lesson. <laughs> how did we begin? <laughs> it would be dark breath. I gotta say, you're gotta totally say you're blowing, blowing my mind blowing right my now. Mind right now. That's what I that's what I do. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson. Neil deGrasse bitch. There it is. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson. Bitch. Totally blowing my mind right now. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson. Bitch. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Bitch. No, he's not. At that height? You don't you don't see the curvature of the earth, curvature of the earth. if you are two millimeters above this beach ball. This beach ball. Is, he just it's don't. He just don't. That stuff is flat. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, bitch. There it is. It's beautiful. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, bitch. Grass tight.
there is no reference to what we think it is because in fact we have no idea we live in a free country in a free society you ought to be able to think and say whatever you want you can and should think whatever you want he wants to think earth is flat go right ahead you want to think the world is flat go right ahead if some of these folks were around when columbus set sail you know, these guys were around when columbus set sail they, 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 they must have been founding members of, of the flat earth society They'd be charter members of the Flat Earth Society. It's... You must consider every available option and platform to meet our goals, including industry, government, the entire American space enterprise. Bitch. History is written by those who dare to dream big and do the impossible. We gotta dare to dream big, uh, try to do the impossible. Bitch. History is written by those who dare to dream and do the impossible. Bitch. We keep going. Whether it's the moon, an asteroid, Mars. The moon, Mars, asteroids, there's a lot of destinations that we could go to. Bitch. The moon, an asteroid, Mars, sending uh, unmanned robotic missions out to the moons of Saturn and Jupiter. Bitch. Now, if I call it dark gravity, are you going to say, does dark gravity really exist? I say, yeah. 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 There is no reference to what you think it is. Because, in fact, we have no idea. If you, if you have got a few more minutes, I mean, I pointed out that you have a belief, though. You started off this by saying that you don't have religious beliefs, you're not a religious person. But you do. You, you, you have a religious belief that you're on a spinning water ball flying through a vacuum. So, if, if I may, there's a few points that are you know would like to cover with you if that's okay with you in terms of why that's not the case i mean i haven't got to cover any of those really but obviously if you're in a rush to get off i don't mind the earth being a sphere is asserted by way of this begging the question fallacy which is called a proof of nothing earth curve calculator that has geometry and is based on an r value and if the earth is a sphere with a radius of 39.59 miles then every distance to horizon can be no more than 1.2 times the square root of the observer's height and feet. That would be the geometric horizon. And we've got these images that show that the horizon, this claim to be physical obstruction called Earth curve, is way beyond the distance and parameters and constraints of this physical geometry laid down in the maths. Now as a result, we are told by the people, at least on my show Flat Earth Debate, that we don't have a geometric physical sphere edge horizon. The thing can't be seen which leaves the model of a sphere Earth in complete tatters, because if you can't see the geometric horizon to measure it, you can't acquire an R value to assert physical geometry, leaving the idea of physical geometry in complete tatters. We, we call this argument the black swan. It's our number one debunking of the globe Earth, begging the question fallacy that is to assume an R value and then reify it into existence at the point you see the world converge, the horizon, a non-physical location that people think is the edge of the earth for boats to go over. It isn't. The horizon's not physical. But we've debunked that with this argument called the black swan. So moving on, the sky I mentioned a few times is not a vacuum. Nature abhors a vacuum. If the sky was a vacuum, the gas we all enjoy breathing would fill the availability of space. And irony of irony, they call that area space. Outer space, a vacuum which it definitely isn't because we'd have no gas to breathe. There's a natural law called the second law of thermodynamics which would imply that the gas would want to fill the availability of volume it has to fill. It will expand in all directions to fill the space. And if space was a space, the gas would fill it and we'd all be dead. We're not. Therefore, the sky is definitely not 10 to the minus 17 vacuum as is asserted. Last but by no means least, it's asserted that we have a 15 degree in our turn of the Earth underneath anything that leaves the earth it's asserted by things like snipers and it's called the coriolis effect that's its most familiar no name it asserts that things that leave a turning earth will from the ground at least be experienceable with a deflection at 15 degrees an hour unfortunately that would imply that if you took off on a helicopter you'd be able to wait for the country west of you to come to you as the earth turned underneath 
also a drone you'd launch it off at the equator and it would fly away at a thousand miles an hour as you turned underneath it obviously these things don't happen even though they're asserted to so we don't have earth turn we don't have a sky vacuum and we don't have physical geometry as is reified by a mathematical model called heliocentric sphere earth model by way of a begging the question proof of nothing perspective hijacking earth curve calculator we don't live on a sphere the earth is obviously and observably flat look at that that in the distance is the ghostly figure of mount san jacinto by palm springs over 117 miles away i'm panning to the right and there is another mountain peak that's visible there you go that's the lax uh, control tower to the right just incredible that peak is over 70 miles away this is just incredible look at the difference infrared can make it can reveal the unseen the perfect tool for researching the flat earth let's have a look at the map to see what we saw there's three lines there and those are the peaks that we were looking at very far away incredibly far but I wasn't pleased with the resolution so I embarked on another project a high resolution imaging project I bought a Celestron uh, spotting scope and a monochrome um, astronomy camera and I put an infrared filter in front of it, uh, an 850 nanometer infrared filter. And it worked pretty good. Have a look at this. Look how it, I can zoom in on an area. That area in infrared was 3000 by 2000 pixels. High resolution and I could zoom in. This was the island visible from Santa Barbara, but soon I went to Malibu again. Have a look. Based on the building you see in the foreground 12 miles away, I now had the resolution I needed to um, see the floors, the different floors, and I averaged a few, of, a few of them together and I assumed about a 12 foot separation between the floors. And based on that I created the scale in milli radian. And what, wouldn't you know it, that mountain not only is visible when it shouldn't, but it's showing up at the correct angular elevation. Simply amazing. Now, if the Earth was curved, we shouldn't see Mount San Jacinto. 
even though it is 10,600 feet high. The shoreline and the hills on the other side of the bay should be hiding it in entirety. Now if we compare this to the flat surface model, look how simple it is and it is accurate. We calculate the correct elevation of 17 milliradians. Simply incredible. Now I'm gonna leave you with these images. Just ponder this folks. This is incredible. That's all I can say. Incredible. Behold your flat earth folks. Just incredible. This picture was taken from even farther away. I went to Point du May, 122 to the peak. The peaks to the right, 125, and even farther away. Just incredible. The ghostly image of distant mountains bearing a silent witness that the earth is flat. This past January I was flying back to Los Angeles and the weather was really clear, visibility was awesome and I had my infrared camera with me and I was able to see the snow-capped Colorado mountains uh, in really crisp detail like never before and I'll show you that the um, previous video clip was just a teaser, we're gonna zoom in. Um, but before we do that, here's um, a graphic and I put the horizon um, uh, circles on there so we can see how far we should see if the Earth is a globe. And uh, <clears throat> you'll see that uh, we're going to be able to, to uh, see the mountains way out there. Now, before I show you these clips, let's review the first video the first aerial video that I took with a different camera. This this time I had my 4K camera with me, but the first aerial infrared video, uh, I'm gonna try to denoise that and see how it um, you know how it performs. So we'll we'll compare the two. Now the flight paths were not quite the same. One was uh, slightly to the north of the other one. Um, and in January, there was a lot of snow in the mountains, so that helps quite a bit. So, let's dive right in. So this was the first aerial uh, video that I made after, this, after I discovered that uh, infrared is such a powerful technology. And unfortunately, as you all remember, the window was fogged up a little bit and uh, still, this was a HD quality uh, camcorder. And um, good thing I kept filming because initially I thought I was seeing clouds in the distance, but then as I got closer, I noticed there were actually mountain peaks that had some snow on them. So, let's try to denoise a part of this clip. So I've demonstrated this denoising tool uh, before. Incredible results, look at that. This interpolates across a few frames and I can control that, but the results are pretty impressive. However, there's no substitute for high resolution. So we'll see how these mountains look in 4K on a pretty clear day. Now, let's take a look at the first clip, denoised. So here we go. And uh, it 
looks a lot more interesting. Actually, this is the raw. And then we'll show the denoise the clip in a second. Oh yeah, look at all the graininess. There's the mountains. See those? Wow. So late March, some of the snow had melted. The visibility was sort of okay. Um, but yeah, that's what really got me excited. Look at that. Wow. Now here's what it looks like denoised. It's cleaned up quite a bit. Wow, look at that. Ooh. There we go. Ah, there's the mountains. Whoa. That looked interesting when you zoom in and out because it's interpolating. It looks like there is a rubber sheeting phenomenon. There's those mountains way out there. Pretty cool. Now here's clip number two. Um, different sequence. So this is the raw footage. There's the mountains. And... Uh, I'll uh, denoise this short clip here in a second. So here we go. Wow, look at that. Yeah! Love it. Pretty, pretty awesome. So here we're, we're zooming from somewhere south of Phoenix. Now here's clip number three. Now we're a little bit closer. Maybe we've crossed into New Mexico. Look at that. Ooh, it's kind of jumping around. I don't know what happened. But look at that. Now, here's the Colorado Rocky Mountains uh, filmed on January. So we've seen the flight path already a little bit higher than the previous one, but the, um, the results are incredible. Let's have a look.
Wow, what a scenery, folks. Unbelievable. Now let's apply noise reduction to this video clip and see how it comes out. Here we go. Look how clear it is. So this is slightly closer to the mountains. Um, look at that. Unbelievable. Look at the detail. Man. It was, it was a little bit frustrating because I had to turn my body and kind of film at an angle through the window looking back and um, those dark uh, squares on there I identify what those were. Um, they are water ponds next to uh, Snowflake, Arizona and we're looking down at about 5 degrees so we're about 50 miles away given our um, altitude. So we're approaching Phoenix and looking out over the Navajo Nation towards Colorado. So yeah, look at the mountains. It was a really clear day, better camera. Uh, didn't have that haze that I encountered last time. And um, it helps to have the snow um, on top of the mountains because it reflects the near infrared so we're filming a near infrared 940 or 950 nanometer uh, infrared filter but yeah look at that wow just incredible a world of difference from my first aerial infrared clip just incredible folks just incredible So here we're kind of approaching uh, Phoenix, we're just east over the mountains and uh, I'm trying to also look forward to see what, what, what's visible and um, yeah, look at that just peeking over the wing. You know there's so many factors when you fly, it's like seat position, weather obviously, flight path and sometimes things just don't come together but this time they came together pretty good I was pleased with the clarity and uh, the flight path it would have been nice if they would have flown a little bit farther but yeah that's the way they flew yeah look at those mountains in the distance now there would be more mountains out there but infrared gets absorbed eventually and um, you know by the haze and it just looks black um, so but yeah this is incredible wow did you recognize those small peaks on the ground we saw those in the other clip too so anyway here we just passed phoenix and we're kind of looking north towards the grand canyon North Rim, that's North Rim right there. And we can see way beyond. And snow peaked mountains way in the distance. Incredible. So the world looks incredibly flat when we look from above. So one of the challenges is to identify a distant target. Here it's easy, right? We got the mountains and sort of know the altitude and we can do the calculations uh, but sometimes it's not so easy but we can see beyond the horizon um, so before I let you guys go here's some uh, incredible imagery and clips I obtained in November of 2019 these are one of the clearest and I uh, captured these with uh, a DSLR camera have a look.
So because of the enhanced contrast due to snow, we can tell those are mountains, but if that wasn't the case, look at that green line. I bet you most of us would have thought that's the edge of the earth, um, the horizon right there. But it really helps to get that contrast uh, in the darkness uh, so we can see farther out. Isn't that incredible, folks? Yeah, this is amazing. Now, from all my studies from the air, um, I've gotten into a 3D analysis so I can separate, um, you know, the mountain peaks and figure out what's behind. Um, and um, also use parallax and photogrammetry and uh, from all my studies, I've come to the conclusion that uh, this is what the surface appears to look like. Yeah, so in that inset, um, we see the observed surface in black, right? It kind of goes out way in the distance and then appears to roll up at the end. And I believe that's due to refraction at low grazing angles. Um, but look at the theoretical. It should constantly curve away. But that's not what we observe. And we observe that in NASA imagery. We observe that in, uh, you know, a lot of high altitude, um, you know, missions. And the higher we go, the more strange it appears because we're seeing farther and farther so one model overtakes the other one rapidly but the flat earth model has this phenomena at the edge it does roll off quickly um, and so it's a very strange reality and um, science um, just creates models to explain this and their explanation is that light curves um, from the surface towards the aircraft um, as it goes um, to higher elevations where it travels faster, which makes sense, except that's not really what's happening. Um, there's a bunch of anomal anomalous things out there. Uh, but yeah, in science we just create models and we try to curve it the data and try to prove that there is certain refraction occurring, you know, to reconcile our models. So I think that's not good science, but um, I'm planning on dealing, really, you know, diving deep into all this and the math. Um, I'm gonna stop doing some of these quick videos um, soon, and I'm gonna try to change my style to more of an educational, style because I have a lot of information present on curve space time and other stuff just incredible stuff folks I bought a theodolite and I have some incredible new evidence to present so make sure you guys subscribe and thank you to all that leave comments and um, have helped me uh, and motivated me by their comments so thank you and uh, have a great one folks God bless
Hello everyone, welcome to another incredible infrared video. I just got back from Washington DC and it was rainy and ugly and I lost all hope. But then, around St. Louis it was very clear and I noticed the Mississippi River. And boy, I was able to capture some incredible footage and long distance too. Have a look at this footage, folks, and let me know what you think, because it is simply incredible. GPS apses were at an altitude of about 32,940 feet. And here is roughly what the view looks like. Except notice I am at about 23 uh, miles in Google Earth. Uh, we have to go much higher to get the equivalent view to the flat Earth um, that we're seeing. Um, so it's simply incredible. Now, we're gonna use Google Earth and pan around and measure a few distances uh, just to get a feel for uh, what's out there. The distance to uh, Lake Michigan seems to be over 300 miles. And um, we'll, we'll measure a few other points here to uh, Lake Superior, Superior on that particular position about 560 and eh, close to 600, 730 to the other side. And I'm going to zoom out here to see how far it is to Hudson Bay because I'm tantalized by whether I'm seeing Hudson Bay or not and that's 1200 miles to the uh, shore and across it uh, so I'm gonna measure a few spots here and then I'm gonna go to the other side here in a little bit and you'll see it's close to 1,700 uh, miles, which is incredible, folks, I don't know. Maybe I'm losing my mind or something, you know, this infrared is messing me up, but <laughs> I get the feeling I'm seeing so far, you know. Other people see different things, maybe, you know, I'm delusional. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, have a look at this footage because what you're about to see is simply incredible. And we'll do some analysis too. And we'll compare the flat earth to the uh, globe model. And we'll note a few differences. So make sure you watch uh, till the end because there's some great footage coming up. And by the way, uh, thanks to all that have subscribed, make sure you know, if you like this video, click like and uh, make sure you subscribe because it helps me out. So, thanks, thanks everybody.
Now have a look at this footage, it's incredible. Here we are looking again towards Lake Michigan. Uh, that's another river that flows in the Mississippi. And look at that. This is incredible. Lake Michigan, Lake Winnebago, Green Bay. Unbelievable distances here, folks. Unbelievable. Keep watching. Now the main dark uh, river there, that's Mississippi. Now we're starting to pan a little bit more. There's some haze on the window. It was scratched or something. It was very annoying. Um, you can see me moving the camera around once in a while to try to avoid that haze. Look at that clarity. Wow. See, I've, I've uh, increased contrast in uh, Adobe Premiere. Incredible, look at that river. That's the Mississippi. And then that's Quincy, Illinois, right there. Incredible contrast here, folks. Look at that, wow. Man. I'm using a Sony AX53. With a 950 nanometer infrared filter, the the zoom capability is about 30x. Wow, look at that. What are we seeing there? I'm going to try to uh, grab some images and uh, clear them up. I think that's Lake Superior. Maybe even some cloud cover. Look at that. I just uh, averaged eight images together. You can sort of see a faint cloud layer, you know, black streaks which resemble the lakes. Wow, this is crazy. Let's have a look at the satellite um, image to see what, what we're dealing with. So the plane is about right there. I label where Mark Twain Lake should be. Lake Michigan, we're sort of looking in that direction. And there's Lake Superior, and way in the distance, Hudson Bay. Wow, crazy stuff. We'll come back to this and do an analysis, because I'm curious what we're seeing. Yeah, look at that. There appear to be the Great Lakes in the distance. Just incredible stuff, folks. Cloud cover seems to be uniform, although we cannot rule out it may be cloud shadows on the ground. I have to do an analysis later, but there's the Mississippi. Simply incredible imagery here, folks. Okay, so let's have a look at some analysis. So what I've done is what I label Lake Superior. I took those distances and calculated the look down angle, 0 0.6 degrees and 0.5. So now I had uh, about a 0.1 degree uh, scale to work with and I replicated that upwards and then Interestingly enough, at the point three degrees, I calculate what that should be. It's 1,200 miles, and it corresponds with, you know, the edge, uh, the shore of uh, Hudson Bay, 
which is simply incredible, folks. And then the 1700 corresponds with the other side of it. That just blew me away. Are we really seeing Hudson Bay? Wow, I'm not ready to make that kind of claim. I'm almost hesitant to even make the claim I'm seeing 1200 miles because it is simply incredible. Here's how far we're seeing, folks, if that's what we're seeing. So the scale was based on the 600 mile and 740 mile distance across Lake Superior and I got the scale. And then it seems to correspond with the 1200 mile at the southern shore of Hudson Bay, which is simply incredible, folks. Simply incredible. Here's the globe view for some perspective. Look at that, man. This is incredible. If we're seeing that far, wow. Simply wow, you know? Anyway, let's continue with a few more clips. I'm gonna remove the filter and try to get another reading uh, from my GPS app. Let's see where I'm at exactly. Look at that haze outside the window. Yeah, infrared can pierce through all the haze. It's incredible. So on my phone, you can see I put a lot of uh, marks uh, as the plane was flying to get a sense of which way it was heading. There, it just updated. I was waiting for it to update. You have to hold those cell phones close to the window to pick up the signals. Uh, otherwise it doesn't work. I'm torquing around here with the start the GPS app. That's just Google Maps right there. Here we go. Some people were asking about it. It's GPS status. That's the name of the app. And there's other ones out there, of course. It looks like we're still hovering around 33,000 On a heading of 263 degrees. Now I'm gonna put the filter back. Yeah, look at the clarity it brings, man. This infrared stuff is simply incredible, folks. But even more incredible is obviously this flat earth phenomenon. And uh, we'll be comparing what it looks like in infrared to Google Earth. So this is a screen grabbing Google Earth uh, at the correct elevation that I'm at. Um, here it's slightly higher, 33,566. It was in the lower right. Now here I've superimposed it to the infrared image. And just have a look at this. Notice the main differences between reality, which is what I'm filming in infrared and the globe model. The most striking is the perspective, you know, we, we can see very far and it seems like we're on a flat plateau. Now, uh, the other difference is the horizon elevation on the globe model. From that high up, we should be looking down a little bit. Uh, I, I've addressed this in my other videos. Uh, and then... The other uh, difference, which is not quite as conclusive, seems to be curvature. Uh, there's more curvature um, that's seen in uh, the globe. Uh, although in infrared, sometimes you can sort of see some curvature. And it's a really complex thing. It could be, uh, you know, haze, refraction, could be windows. Uh, it's really hard to tell. 
but the most convincing is really uh, how far um, we see that's really the most conclusive and just the appearance this perspective you look at the ground and you're saying it doesn't roll off in the distance um, like it does you know on a globe uh, and that's really striking you know this flat earth stuff is incredible folks really is I'll have more to say about this, but I wanted to get this video out to you guys because, yeah, it just blew me away, you know, it just blew me away. Um, anyway, thanks to all that have subscribed and liked my videos and commented. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Am I going delusional here, seeing things are not there or what? I. <laughs> I feel like we're seeing what I'm saying we're seeing, you know? I mean, different people are gonna see different things. Anyway, uh, thanks again, everyone. Uh, more to come. I got some exciting experiments coming up. So make sure you subscribe.